what I want to do very, very briefly, very briefly, is, is talk about what I think is Ken's uh, historical, historical importance to uh, the art of painting objects, still life objects. And I, I only know in my, my own knowledge of it that I haven't seen, before Ken Davy started to paint these things, when he was a young artist, we were used to the usual beautiful still lifes, objects on a table, the Dutch, Dutch still lifes, all the way to what Cezanne did with the modern approach, the almost cubistic approach to still life. After Kent starts painting as a student and then as a young artist, you start to look at things like this, an abstract thumb. And when we look at this, we realize that what he's done is it's explore new areas of, of spatial <laughs> relations on a both two, two and three dimensional uh, surface, two dimensional surface and three dimensional space. Uh, we look at the objects and they're beautifully uh, painted, uh, as, as beautifully painted as you can get, as, as a human can get. And yet we look at it and we realize that there's something brand new to this. And uh, I, before, again, that before Ken was doing this as a, as a young painter, I don't remember anything like this, which to me signifies uh, uh, something brand new and trailblazing. He's, uh, to me, he's broken new ground historically. And that's what I'm here to say. I want to get this off my chest because I think it's been very important to me over the years as a student and all through knowing him and seeing things uh, again, like this, for example. Now we look at the overall croc and the beautiful object in front of us, in front of Louise, we say, that's beautiful. It's an incredible painting. It's a Ken Davis. And yet we look at the background, we look at the composition generally, and it's stark. It's, there's nothing cluttered, there's nothing uh, wasted, but there's everything new in it. He's, take, he's doing things to the background that before he started to do this, you just didn't see. And uh, we can look at all of his work and have that sense of appreciation. Even even this type of thing, the egg grater. This is one of the earliest paintings I saw of Kent, the egg grater, where he just takes this long space, nothing there, this wonderful balance. Uh, he has his own sense of design. And again, he, he just turns, to, to, to my mind, he turns still life painting upside down, uh, stands it on its head. This, this thing here is a beautiful symphony of, of grays and all sorts of uh, spatial relations on both three-dimensional and two-dimensional uh, surfaces here. It, it's called stove. It, it, it's got that beautiful little pot there, gorgeous, understated, very strange color. There's, there's no color in here. There. And yet, when you look at it, there's a world of color, absolute restraint in color. It's absolutely beautiful. The way it just moves around. And we can look at, you know, his thinking is in this room as well. Uh, so, this is really all I wanted to say. It's, it's just uh, an appreciation of what he's done as an inventor, you know. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of great artists, there's a lot of, we all make our contributions, or our little contributions, whatever. But once in a while, somebody like Ken comes along and redefines stuff. And that's, that's, that's not too common. This is one of my favorites, durability, which was, which was an assignment that Ken gave to us. <laughs> and boy, you might remember in our second year, whatever it was, I mean, illustration assignment. Illustrate the word durability. You know, right after he, or during the time you were doing his painting. And here's just the anvil and then a deep space in back of it, suggested, but only suggested. You look at it and you can't really see what it is, but it has a sense of a blacksmith's cellar, whatever it might be, it's there. <coughs> and that's, that's the X element that Ken always has, and has imbued in his work that you can't really define. That's his gift, as well as the great technical gift, but it's the combination that, that sets him really part, I think, historically. <coughs> that's, that's basically what I wanted to say.